This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and welcome to what is the last video in the non-game game development series. Over the course of the series, we've covered things from loading and navigating menus, uh, loading your actual game levels, managing multiple levels in your game, calling and mixing different audio tracks, as well as saving player progress and data. Uh, we touched a little bit on level editing. Right now we're just kind of doing that strictly in the inspector, and that is something I'd like to dive deeper into in the future. However, that's really something that could support its own entire series, so I didn't want to get, kind of give it short shrift here. Um, I'd rather wait and give that its own dedicated series sometime in the future. Uh, in the meantime, though, I do want to do a couple of little cleanup things and um, kind of resolve one outstanding issue that was in our code before we wrap up this project. So the first thing, a couple of quick cleaning up things that we're going to do here in our uh, project folder or our project uh, tab is that I want to kind of give our scenes their own uh, folder. This is kind of a simple thing, but it's really something that I should have done a while ago. And typically what I'll do is I'll actually give that like a underscore in the front. This was a trick I actually learned um, from a separate course. Uh, that always just puts that right up front for you because typically things like scenes, anything that's important to you, um, you can jump right there. Now I do actually have, I remember I had added this means of kind of searching for scenes simply by searching for them by type, but it'd just be nice in our assets folder not to have these um, kind of files hanging out here in our root assets folder. So I'm gonna drop those into there. Our outsider script, which was very useful to, for us in the beginning when we didn't really have the rest of our architecture, we no longer need this. So I'm gonna delete this as well. I'm simply gonna hit delete, cannot undo this action, that's fine. So now we've got a lot cleaner of a project, which is a good thing. The last thing though I wanna do though is I wanna kind of resolve an issue that we had with our singleton pattern in our play session manager. If I open up scripts here, we see our play session manager script. We're gonna open that up in mono develop. And you'll recall that how we set this up was that on awake, we did this singleton pattern where we say, you know, we have the static instance of a play session manager if there isn't one, we make the existing one into the singleton, kind of the, the almighty singleton um, instance of it. Otherwise, we destroy it. And then we do some additional uh, work here. We get our players um, save data. We set our furthest level based on that data that we got. And then we subscribe to some events that are being handled in the game level itself. Things like what happens when a scene is loaded or when a level is ended. And this is actually where we're running into some, we ran into some issues because what happened was before we did all this, when we first had this all set up in this way, what would happen is that on scene load, we actually had multiple of these singletons around. And the reason for that is that when you call destroy game object, that actually doesn't happen until the very end of the frame that it's called on. So even though we're telling any extraneous play session managers to destroy themselves, they still exist for the remainder of this um, awake method, as well as um, down here as well as for things like when on scene load is called. And so that is not really, um, that's, gonna, that's what leads to these weird situations where for example, it, we had this um, solution of this singleton check. And if we hadn't been doing this, what would happen is that the level, when we would try to load a level, it would actually be looking at the wrong play session manager and it would always end up pulling up level zero for us which isn't what we want. We want to be able to progress through the game. So we kind of had this a little bit of a hacky solution of just checking, are you the singleton? If you're not, then don't actually load anything. Um, and that's, like I say, really not the ideal solution. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of this altogether because we don't want this hacky solution. So I'm going to get rid of singleton check there. Um, and he's going to let me know that there's an issue with it here in the handle level end. We're going to get rid of that. We're also going to get rid of it here. So now we can look up here and say, well, It'd be nice if we had another way of resolving this because what we really just want to make sure that doesn't happen is that we don't want these events to get called on the duplicate play session manager. And it's actually really easy for us to do. And it's simply one line of one word of code really that we need to just say in here, if you are not the instance, you're going to set yourself to be destroyed. And I don't want you to do any of this other stuff here. So we're simply going to say destroy and then return. It was a really simple solve that um, didn't come around to until the very end of the series, and I apologize for that. Having this return here just means that any duplicates are never going to do any of this code, and that actually resolves that issue entirely for us. So with all of that, we've now got ourselves a fairly bug-free, 
um, self-contained running game with all of these various features beyond the game itself working for us. I am going to upload all of this to my GitHub site. I'll put the uh, address on the screen here and I'll keep I'll um, put it in the um, show description as well. So if you would like to download the scripts for this and kind of work on these yourself or see what I've done, get a closer look at the code, uh, feel free to download those. We're going to be moving on to some different topics in the uh, upcoming weeks. I'm really excited about some of the projects. I'll have a video out kind of previewing some of those in a short while. And uh, thanks again so much for watching this series. If you've stuck through it, we've been through about 26 weeks of work here. That's about half a year, so that's really impressive. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Despite centuries of historical records, we still have no idea what the cubes are or where they came from. They would only react to certain people, under certain conditions. Only one thing is known for certain. Those that work with the cubes for too long end up vanishing.